Hey y'all, it's me Ari Bell and welcome to my YouTube channel and if you are new, please subscribe and don't forget you are awesome. The room was not this big at the time. It was actually cut off right in the center here. You can still see three floorboards on the ground showing us where the wall would have been, separating two different rooms. I'm going to focus on this side though because this would have been Betty Richardson's room. I told you guys to choose wisely where you sit, and all but two of you chose wisely, and then it's you two back here. Now, that's because in these three seats over here, that's where Betty Richardson was found. You guys like the seat open for her too, she appreciates it. And she was found where her bathtub was, she was found in it, wrapped in bed linens, a wet towel around her face, and not to the side of her neck. Sounds very odd, but that's actually exactly what they told people to do if they had no other way to escape from a fire. And there was a fire here, but it ended up being very insignificant. It's actually so insignificant that they could have opened up the doors for service the very next day. But instead, they stayed closed for five days for a funeral. But not Betty Richardson's funeral, though they stayed closed for Ruth Pickering's funeral. Ruth Pickering lived directly above where we are now in the fourth floor penthouse suite, and she was found in the same exact way as Betty. She was found in her bathtub, wrapped in bed linens, a wet towel around her face, and a knot to the side of her neck. Now, what are the odds so that both of these ladies would have had the same idea to wait to die? Because really that's all they were doing, was waiting to die. Neither of them decided to look a mere inches from where their bathtub was, right outside this window, or the one that would be right above it, to see what's conveniently located on the other side. And that would be a fire escape, one of the best ways to escape from a fire. They both turned it down, and I'm not sure why, because, well, Betty would have had a very clear view of it. But what's more odd is that Ruth Pickering lived here for about three years. So she should know what's right outside of her bedroom window. Also on top of that, she was very good friends with the owners of the hotel, and Marjorie Kinnon Rawlings actually said in the St. Augustine Record, which is our newspaper here, that Ruth Pickering used to use that fire escape almost every single day to go up to the roof to sunbathe. So Ruth knew exactly where it was, exactly how to get to it, and still we're supposed to believe she thought it would be smartest to wait it out in her bathtub. That doesn't make much sense. That's how we knew these ladies must have been dead before the fire even started. But not only that, if they were in their bathtubs, presumably still alive before the fire got too bad, that should have been enough to survive the fire. Because it only lasted about 20 minutes and it barely did any damage at all to the building. Now, the damage was so insignificant that there were no repairs, there were no renovations, there was only a cleanup process involved. So that goes to show you that the floorboards below us right now, these are original to 1887. What I mean by that is that over here where the fire was, there's no permanent damage, there's no burn marks anywhere. However, upstairs in the penthouse, we still do have some burn marks up there. But they're just over on this side of the wall in that corner. They don't really extend very far over. And they don't get too high off the ground, showing us not only was the fire not that bad, but it was pretty well contained. But on the coroner's report still, it says that these ladies died from the fire. Or at least it says they died of smoke asphyxiation, which isn't even the proper term to use. They should have said it was smoke inhalation or suffocation. And it seems like a kind of small thing to nitpick at. That's what their entire report was. With these little tiny mistakes that if they would have looked twice at, they very easily could have fixed and moved on. But they didn't look twice, they just moved right on. That's because they got these two dead bodies in from a fire in St. Augustine. And it's a very safe city today, and even safer back then. So they decided not to look too far into it, and they wrote these off as two unfortunate casualties. However, that's exactly why you're here tonight. We're gonna figure out exactly what happened, and our next stop on the tour will be Mr. X's room. But before we do head on, if you guys do want to take pictures in here, I strongly suggest it. This is my absolute favorite room to do so in. Uh, I will tell you that these two corners seem to get a lot of really good pictures, but I've seen great ones all over. Peter's like really going on. Back at the time, they didn't think much of the way he signed in. They just thought that he's a wealthy businessman, didn't want to be bothered. So that asked him any questions, he just headed right up to his room. Shortly after though, a young lady comes through the same doors and she signed in under her real name. Betty Richardson. And though her last name may have had the word rich in it, she was rich by no means of the word. She was a dressmaker from Jacksonville, Mr. X's mistress, and by 12 p.m. that day, she would be one of the two dead bodies found within this building. And that's exactly what we'll be going over. First, we're gonna find out where they were found, and second, where they were killed. And our first stop on the tour will be Betty Richardson's room. And don't forget, you're awesome as always, and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye, y'all.